Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, I'm going to talk about the hypothesis testing for the population variance or population standard deviation. And uh, in particular, I will give a specific example related to a one-tailed test. And I'm going to show you how to do that using a traditional approach and the p-value approach. So in general, um, the hypothesis testing about population variance can be either one-tailed or two-tailed. So this really depends on the research question uh, or the problem given to you. Yeah? And I hope that at this point, you should already know the difference between one-tailed and two-tailed tests. And I'm going to uh, let you do this on your own. Um, you have to be able to explain the difference between these two tests using your own words. Yeah? Now, um, in general, the process of hypothesis testing will follow exactly what you have seen in chapter 3, except that there is a slight difference here where the statistical test for testing the population variance is given by this formula here. Okay, so this is the statistical test. And um, I've already explained to you what is n and it's the sample size. S squared here is the sample variance and sigma squared here is the population variance. So if you want to find the critical values of p-value, you have to refer to the chi-square distribution table where the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. Now let us look at a specific example here. And this is an example of one-sided test. Well, here we have the machine that fails. The packages of hazelnut cookies is set up in such a way that Average net weight of these packages is 32 ounces with a variance of 0 0.015 square ounces. Right, so this is the value of mu and this is the value of uh, sigma squared. Okay, so here it says the acceptable value of the population variance is 0 0.015 or less. Now, this statement here corresponds to the null hypothesis statement okay because we have we can construct the mathematical representation of this as um, sigma squared must be is 0 0.015 which means it's equal or less so this is 0 0.015 so that is the null hypothesis statement now, a recently taken random sample of 25 packages, so this is the value of n, give a sample variance of 0 0.029. So, this is the value of your data, which is S squared. Based on this sample, and alpha is 0 0.01, do you think the machine needs to be stopped and adjusted? Well, this will be based on the acceptable value set here. The acceptable value is 0 0.015 or less. If it is uh, not within the acceptable value, of course, the machine needs to be stopped and adjusted. Now, assume that the net weights of cookies in all packages are normally distributed and use the traditional approach for testing the hypothesis. All right, so uh, let's start with uh, step one, which is to write down the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So clearly, we already managed to obtain the null hypothesis. I'm just going to write down h null variance less than or equal to 0 0.015. And based on that, we can come up with the alternative hypothesis, which is just a contradictory statement for the uh, given above here. So we have variance greater than 0 0.015. Now, on the second step, what we need to do is we need to calculate the statistical test. So, second step. Step 2. Obtain the statistical test. And it is given by this formula here. N minus 1. S squared over sigma squared. So, you can see that um, N is 25. So, minus 1 is 24 times with s squared is this one, 0 0.029. And sigma squared here comes from this null hypothesis value. So here we have less than 
or equal to so, so the the fact that we have an equal sign here enables us to substitute this value into this position so this is 0 0.015 and i hope that you do realize we are comparing this is the result of our data the result of our experiment you are comparing your experiment with the value of null hypothesis okay so here we are testing uh, whether our data is um, against or supporting the null hypothesis yeah so now um based on that you will see the value of test statistic is going to be 46.4 so this is the value of test statistic next uh we need to find the critical value okay step three is find the critical value so here is the chi-square distribution and um you can see here that alpha is 0 0.01 and this is a one-sided test the direction is towards the right because it is greater than so therefore the critical region there is only one critical region and the critical region is situated on the right of the distribution and the area of this is going to be equal to 0 0.01 so our job is to find what is what is this value here on the horizontal axis and this value is called chi squared 0 0.01 because this is the value uh, that gives the area of 0 0.01 so this is the value from this point to the right from this point to the right the area is going to be equal to 0 0.01 so if you refer to the chi square distribution table, um, sample size is sorry degrees of freedom is twenty four, and um, area is zero point zero one. So here we have forty two point nine eight. So that is the critical value. So this is forty two point nine eight zero. Okay, so. I'm just going to write down clearly that critical value critical value is equal to 42.980 and uh, on the fourth step we are going to compare the test statistic with the critical value so on the fourth step we're going to decide step four we're going to decide whether the null hypothesis should be rejected or not so the basis of this is based on comparing uh, the position of 46.4 with the critical value which is 42.98 so we know that if this point is 42.98 therefore 46.4 is going to fall somewhere here right so it's going to fall in the critical region okay because at this point is is 42 so 46 must be uh toward the right of this value 42.98 so 46.4 is going to be in the critical region all right so what i'm going to write down is i'm going to say the test statistic 46.4 falls into the critical region so based on that HNR is able to be rejected all right then we are going to make a conclusion uh, enough evidence okay, or there is enough evidence to say that the population variance okay, um, we whenever you write the conclusion you are going to relate your conclusion with the alternative statement so there is enough evidence to say that the population variance 
is greater than 0.015 square ounces and because of that since it is beyond the acceptable value because of that the machine needs to be stopped and adjusted therefore the machine needs to be stopped and adjusted okay right now let's move on to solve the same example using the p-value approach so the first step is the same where you have h null variance is less than or equal to 0.015 and h1 is variance greater than 0.015 now step two is to calculate the test statistic which is also the same procedure and here i'm just going to write down the result the test statistic is 46.4 now step three is to obtain the p-value step three is obtain the p-value and basically if i sketch the chi-square distribution curve i need to know i need to place the position of 46.4 so let's say this is the position of 46.4 i need to know what is the probability of getting 46.4 and larger than that the value of 46.4 and larger than that larger than that means it goes in this direction so basically i need to find what's the area from 46.4 to the right okay so I'm going to write down the process in the mathematical notation. So basically, I want to find what is the probability of getting a chi-squared value of 46.4 or greater than that. Okay, so what is the probability which equals to the area given by this purple region? Yeah. So next, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to refer to the chi-squared distribution curve and we are going to look at degrees of freedom straight away which is 24 and based on this line given here we need to find where is the position of 46.4 so we need to find where is 46.4 situated along this line here you can see that the number here gets bigger and bigger and of course you know that 46.4 is is somewhere here it's not even included on the table here so now i'm just going to give you a visual representation of what is going on of along this line so basically uh, for example this one here you have an area so this is an area of 0 0.995 a very big area 0 0.9995 0 0.995 and the point at this at this position is 9.886 so that is basically what's going on so if let's see if let's say you move on to this part here let's say 0 0.95 what it means it means that the area you can imagine there is this area from this point to the right so the area here is is smaller than this right the area is smaller so naturally it will be from this point to the right the area is 0 0.95 and the point there is going to be the point here is going to be 13 point i'm just going to write down here 13 point eight four eight so you can see the the point gets larger as we move to the uh, right direction okay so now how about this one uh, what does it mean if you have 0 0.1 so 0 0.1 means 
the area is small so let's say from this one so the area is 0 0.1 0 0.1 so at this point the value here is 33.196 so this is the position of 33.196 and of course if it gets even smaller let's say this one so the area is 0 0.005 so you can imagine this is the area which is 0 0.005 and at that position this is the value which is 45.559 so basically it is saying that from this value 45 to the right the area is 0 0.005 or if I put it in mathematical notation probability of getting the value of chi-square equal to 45.559 equal to or greater than equal to or greater than the value of this probability is 0 0.005 so now it goes back to our question which is where is 46.4 so you can see that 46.4 is going to be somewhere here you can imagine 46.4 46.4 this is if this is 45.55 46.4 is going to be definitely somewhere here 46.4 so since uh, it is not included in the table we can say that the probability of the value chi square value greater than or equal to 46.4 the probability of that is going to be less than 0 0.005 so that is one way to represent the result because the result is not given explicitly on the table but we know that the smallest area is 0 0.005 so if you talk about the chi-square value greater than or equal to 46.4 the probability of that is going to be less than what is given on the table so it will be less than 0 0.005 005. Okay, so that is the answer to this uh, question that we are looking for. Yeah. So if we go back to this one, um, we don't have an exact answer of equal to, but we're going to represent our answer in terms of the answer to this is going to be uh, less than, oh, sorry, yes, it was going to be less than or equal to less than or equal to 0 0.005 so that is the probability of obtaining this value to the right less than 0 0.005 the area here is less than 0 0.005 and because this is a one-sided test the p-value is also this, the same value so p-value is also going to be less than 0 0.005 Okay, so on the fourth step, we are going to compare. Step four, we are going to compare uh, p-value with alpha. So p-value is uh, less than 0 0.005 and alpha is 0 0.01. So definitely, this is p-value and this is alpha. So p-value is definitely less than the value of alpha. Yeah? So p-value less than the value of alpha. Therefore, h null is able to be rejected. Okay, so on the last step, step 5, which is conclusion, so we will derive or we will write down the same conclusion so similar conclusion as seen in the traditional approach all right i think that's all for now thank you very much for watching